Afia Benyo. Can the one of that come in? And they are free and pin me a new and it do me a new about who the move be an hour. And what you are No, me want what Jamo can have Jamo. She's living in. You fear some nasa. Not if you are for all a call to where she said Jamo. Say a frew, a ma of some. Never a member of a child who will cost to Sumaco, tea, cock, or so. I saw the frew who will cry on the pedia. Tell them on my yamo. It's an uncle for us, and so they okay, Jalle. Not with your son, Nakai, a tata or no of him. I say, and no example, see, no one known in fair field. I know when you meet me at Yenina, yes, the Pietra, yes, now so long as I mean, sorry, no, 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 Lady, Lebi man pale ame papule ni twa ke gbonyo buwe ame te he men comment e je na ke se ndana no no ebinu ko ho ni ame hie ame to fa ke mai ni ame ba sha ame to le keba keba ame ye to fa ke wa ni ame ka bo yesu ku e ye gbonyo bule mi le ka se ni am eni nu o mu di ko si si yesu ho wo dani mu Hallelujah. I say a buona na e see yes ni pedu ya kwani no. Na me ke sa e na ka me dem. I am the see e dana no o ma dream no. Akoklo e je me. Oh see e muni wo ho. Lebi na da fe da ni aka sa o wala shi he na. Na na no pay e bu bi e dey hini wa wo kwana no. Akoka ya hi. I see your money minute. I walk a shelly. I see your money minute. I walk on your wadunya. I see your your fat and your yam naba. Yes, who she dare he walk. Yes, who saw you in sin. Na koklo eno. A bra ye muni muni. But who no? A koklo ye se. Yes, who dare he walk. Yes, who dare he walk. Amen. Amen. No one saw the only fear of mobo ye be. Enu ti ansa sa wadi ye mobo waha. Ye no ko wulu yo wala me. Ye ye bribi mubi efri wabra mobo. No ne mobo chun ye efha oka. Nia na wama waka baby a wano. Eka di bani a me bote me le. A me na mu joye subodo le. Nia ba me ya ke. Bani a me fe a me fe ya ye ene he wale. No, he e no bada mo a me masai. Ni a me wo atade ye kang kang kemo amen. Amen. Now me put them here. Amen. Now Jesus. I said, "Brother, we are not going to be Jesus. No. Amen. Jesus. I'm with Jesus. No. Money at Bele. Ni a ye kum. Amen. Now be ni a ba fule. I said, "We will pray. We will see." No. Amen. Now ni a telephone. I'm with you, baby. I didn't know what to do. Ni a be ni a me tele. Kwa mo na me ke tu fanga kenga a wule. Na so fe de mo ko so mo ko shen na mo di edu yam na ye ne mo no. Amen. Now Amen. Yesu. I'm with you. I'm with Yesu. Hallelujah. Amen. No amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Yes, Please shall we be on our feet as we worship this morning? Are you ready to worship Jesus? If you are ready, why don't you lift up your hands unto him and begin to wave your hands unto the King of Kings this morning? Wave your hands unto him, wave your hands unto him. Don't be tired of waving your hands. As you wave your hands, you are telling him, God, I give it all to you. I give all to you. You alone deserve my worship this morning. Yet you sit down and Yeah, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are sorry at the sheep. He is risen. We are so much grateful to the Almighty God. We want to see how John on the land island of Patmos described our Savior Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1, 12 to the 18th A. He said, And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed in a garment down to the feet, and gathered about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice like the sound of many waters, at his, in, at his right hand, seven stars. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shining in its strength. John said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the one who lives and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. I am the one who lives and was dead. And behold, and behold, I am alive. I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen.
white flames of fire, and his voice sounded like the waves against the Talk to God. Ask God to speak to you. Ask God to work on you. Have God to speak to you. Let the word of God conduct a surgery indeed on your life. Spiritually and physically. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of the risen Christ. Let there be miracles. Let there be answers. 
Let there be solutions. Amen. Let there be breakthroughs. Amen. In the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Let life be transformed. Amen. Let life be transformed. Amen. Let life be transformed. Amen. Let souls be healed. Amen. Let souls be saved. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Touch everybody here, O oh God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All in this auditorium. All in the balcony. Lord, minister unto all. Amen. And let your name be glorified. Amen. Your spirit is everywhere. Amen. Within and without. So you bring transformation, healing, and deliverance unto your people. We give you worship and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. And let everybody say a big amen. Now be seated in his presence. Jesus Christ is risen. Yes, Christ was sorry. And nothing could hold him captive. Nothing could hold him captive. Nothing could hold him captive. I said nothing could hold him captive. Jesus Christ is risen. Yes, Christ was sorry. And the fact that he's risen means that he has overcome sin. He has overcome sicknesses and diseases. He has overcome the grave. He has overcome every demon and even the devil himself. Jesus is risen. Yes, you are sorry. If you go to the tomb, the tomb is empty after today. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, God is going to touch your life. And you are going to leave this place greatly blessed. You will leave this place greatly blessed. Where you belong to, God is going to get you there. Can somebody say amen? You know, the work on the cross. The great work on the cross. The sufferings of Jesus. The death of Jesus. And the resurrection of Jesus. Is to enable us. To live and be partakers of the divine nature. So. You are supposed to live and be a partaker of the divine nature. You are not supposed to be an ordinary Christian. You are supposed to be above the average Christian. And every member of ultimate Christian ministry should be among the ultimate Christians. Christians who enjoy the divine nature of Christ. Now listen to me. By the divine nature of Christ, you are not supposed to be under the beggarly standards of this world. You are supposed to be above. I said you are supposed to be above. And I'm speaking to everybody here. Nobody is exempted. You are supposed to live above the beggarly standards of this world. Can somebody say amen? And that's the reason why Jesus died. It's good to be a Christian. But not an average Christian. Not a Christian who is bombarded. And is put under subjection. By the forces of this world, you are supposed to be above. Can somebody shout Amen? I say you are supposed to be above. Lift the right and say, I am supposed to be above. And say, I am above. The Bible says, You shall be above and not beneath. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I am speaking on partaking. The divine nature, living the divine nature. And turn with me to the book of Peter. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, your life will be blessed. The word of God will do you good. I said, the word of God will do you good. And whatever is written in the word of God is for your good. Amen. Amen. Peter, Petro. 
I want to read a book of Second Peter. I want to read chapter number one. I want to read chapter number one. And let's read from verse number three to verse number four. And remember, this man called Peter was very close to Jesus. Jesus had multitudes who followed him. And out of them, he had 70. Who he related to. Ah, on your and out of the seven day, he had twelve. Who he was, was so connected to. Ah, no, 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 Called the apostles. Ah, from a and out of the twelve, he, he had three. And this man who wrote this epistle is one of the three. We call him the inner circle. And so, whatever this man is telling you, you have to take it serious. Second Peter, chapter one. I'll read verse three and verse four. According as is divine power as given unto us. Is the one power has given unto us all things. Everybody say all things. Has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so Peter is saying that by the power of the Holy Spirit we have been given all things he has given us not he is going to give or he shall give or he is about to give but he has given unto us he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness it means whatever we need to live a godly life whatever we need to live the life of Christ whatever we need to win in this world has been given unto us Hallelujah. Amen. It's been given unto us. Oh, so they are my all things. Then listen to me. Oh, it doesn't matter and who, where you are coming from. Who free it doesn't matter who, your background. Oh, see, baby, it doesn't free. matter who, your age. Who, it who, doesn't who, matter who, your who, academic status. It doesn't matter who, your family background. Who, you have been given. Oh, so who, you dear mom. All things. I say all things. That pertain to life and godliness. Whatever you need to succeed as a Christian has been given to you. Somebody say amen. This morning I'm preaching the gospel. I'm preaching the good news. I'm preaching the good news. And whatever you need to live a successful Christian life. To live a triumphant Christian life has been given unto you. Can somebody shout amen? He has given them unto us. Hallelujah. Amen. Partakers of the divine nature. Giving unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Hallelujah. Amen. Through the knowledge of him that has called us. True knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Wow. wow. You have been called unto what glory and virtue. You are not 
been called to shame and disgrace. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. You have not been called to shame and disgrace. You have not been called to failure and defeat. You have not been called to self standard life. But you have been called to enjoy glory. And virtue. That should make somebody shout. Hallelujah. I've been called unto glory. I've been called unto virtue. I pray you will catch. You will catch the revelation. Hallelujah. Call us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. Whereby. Are given unto us. Exceeding. Great and precious promises. We have been given exceeding great and precious promises. That by these promises, she might be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. Peter wrote this to the church. It means that there were some people in the church who were not enjoying the divine nature. There were some who were living substandard Christian lives. There were some who were being bombarded by the things of this world. And the man who lived close to Jesus, who was with them on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter said, look, there is something called the divine nature. And it is the will of God that every Christian should partake of this divine nature. Where you are no more a slave. Where you are no more a slave. Where you are no more a slave. To the forces of this world. Somebody lift your right hand and say, I'm no more a slave. Hallelujah, I'm no more a slave. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there is the precious promises of God. Once you take advantage of these promises, you will partake of the divine nature. You will get there. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I'm going to give you one scripture. That we are going to pray on. And that, in that scripture, you will know what Christ did for you. You will know what Christ did for you. Let's go to Colossians. Everybody, if you have a Bible, Colossians. Chapter 2. Verse 1. Verse 1. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 1. 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 Verse so you will understand it better. Colossians. Chapter 2. Verse 13 and verse 15. Now, this scripture is your scripture. On this resurrection Sunday, God wants you to take whatever this scripture says about you and run with it. And hold on to it and experience it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. NIV. NIV. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. Colossians When ye were dead in your sins, and in the uncircumcision of your flesh. God made you alive with Christ. That's number one. Everybody say amen. God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. That's number two. He forgave us all our sins. Having cancelled the charge of our liquor indebted which stood against us. So, number three, it cancel the charge of our liquor indebtedness. And this indebtedness stood against us. And this indebtedness 
condemn us. He has taken it away. He has taken it away. He has taken it away. Nailing it to the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them. Amen. Triumphing over them by the cross. Somebody is say the cross. Crosses. Say the cross. Whatever I say, say, I say. Say the cross. Crosses. Or crisis. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The cross crosses. It crosses all crises. The cross crosses all crises. And listen to the word I'm giving you. Number one, we were dead in our sins. We were dead in our transgressions. The Bible says our sins kill us. The king, they are saying separate us from God. That's what you heard on Friday. Eli, Eli, Sabatani. Eli, Eli, Sabatani. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabatani. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabatani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So on the cross of Calvary, it was not only Jesus who hung there. Christ hung there with your sins. He hung there with your transgressions. He hung there with everything that holds you down. And so for a moment, God turned his face from Christ. Because God could not look at the sin. Yes, has covered Jesus. So he turned his face about. And Christ said, My God, my God, I have never experienced this thing before. I have never experienced it before. My God, my God, it has never happened. So you should you, you could turn your face away from me. But for today, because of your sin, because of my sin, because of your fornication, and your abort, um, abortion. And your idol worship, and your lies, and your compromises, God turned his face from his holy begotten son. Hallelujah. Amen. And Christ was separated from God on the cross. Because we were separated from him. We were dead in our sins and transgressions. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Because of that. Because Christ died on the cross. You have received life. Someone shout amen. I said, because Christ died, he died in your place. So when Christ resurrected, he resurrected with you. I said, with you. So the Bible said, he has made us alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me. You are not dead again. I say you are not dead again. I say you are not dead again. You have been made alive. He has made me alive. I am alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Yes, you are sorry. And the Hyakrate is alive. Jesus is alive. And Richard is alive. Jesus is alive. And Salome is alive. Jesus is alive. And you are alive. Say, I am alive. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Never for a moment entertain that you are dead again. You are alive in Christ. Can somebody say amen? When Christ died, he died with you. When he rose, he rose with you. Never to die again. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, You he has made alive. 
Somebody say I'm alive. Oh, say I'm alive. Say I'm alive. Say I'm alive. I'm alive. If you didn't know today, I want you to know that you are alive. The life of Christ. The life of God is in you. Can somebody say Amen? Turn with me to the book of John. John. Chapter number five. Verse number twenty-four. The Bible says that. Trust him to say. Verily, verily, I say unto you. No cray, no cray. He so that say. heareth my word. The word you are hearing. He that heareth my word. And believeth on him that sent me. Has everlasting life. And shall not come. Sin I've been dealt with. Can somebody say amen? So listen to me. The Bible says sin shall not have dominion over you. Knowing that Christ has forgiven you, gives you that grace and that boldness and what impurity and what righteousness can somebody say amen? amen I don't want to go back to those things again if he died for me and shed his blood and he has forgiven me I won't go back to them again can somebody say amen hallelujah that shows your love for Christ that shows your commitment to the blood by not going back to do things again. Hallelujah. You turn your back to that. And that is what we call repentance. I know your friend has been such a you turn yourself. Like somebody said, 180 degrees. You were going this way. And then you heard the gospel. And you confess your sins. And you were forgiven. And then you turn yourself this way. So look. The world behind me. I go forward with Christ. That is repentance. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we don't go back again. To the sins God has forgiven. Us. We don't we, we don't indulge ourselves in, in what we call deliberate sin again. Because He has forgiven. Listen to me. If your father loves you so much oh, do, do. and bought you no, so. a nice cloth I, I, like Reverend Papafio is wearing of a pastor pastor and that's uh, pastor Opa, uh, 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 and Yale is wearing beautiful, or like you are hearing, or like I'm, I'm wearing. Hallelujah! My daddy loves me so much. And bought this for me. Listen to me. I will not go and put this cloth in the mud because I love it. I love the gift he has given me. If you love the blood, if you appreciate the blood, if you are committed to the blood, you will not go back. Can somebody say amen? May you receive grace. Oh, I said, may you receive grace to walk in holiness, to walk in purity, to walk in righteousness. Somebody said, I receive it. Hallelujah. We love the blood. We love the blood. And therefore, we shall not trample over the blood. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say I am forgiven. Say I am forgiven. And say that smiling. Say I am forgiven. Whether you like it or not, I am forgiven. It doesn't matter the voices I hear. I am forgiven. Hallelujah. Those behind me say I am forgiven. Oh, this all right? I say I am forgiven. Hallelujah. The blood has taken care. I therefore will not be intimidated. I will not. My boldness will not be stolen. Because by the resurrection of Christ, I am justified. I am made bold. Amen. So number one, you have been made alive. By the death of Christ, by the resurrection of Christ, you have been made alive. Number two, you've been forgiven. Number three, very important, listen to this. Colossians 2, 13 to 15. When you were dead in your sins 
And in the circumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. Now there is something here I want everybody to hear. Listen to me. Tell somebody, tell somebody. Then listen to me. Listen to Pastor. He's going to say something. He's going to say something. He's going to say something. He said, Christ. Christo. Cancelled. He cancelled. Something. We stood against us. And condemned us. If something is standing against you, it means the thing is fighting against you. Anything which stands against you, the thing fights against you. The thing limits you. But it also condemns us. The Bible says that Just it has cancelled it. I, I, I like the NIV. Let me read it again. Everybody. Now, now read this with me. Say, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness we stood against us and condemned us. Say it again. Now it is for you. Say Christ. Christ, oh, say Christ, Christ. has cancelled the, the charge of my legal indebtedness, which stood against me, stood against me. and condemned. And condemned. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me explain. There was something that stood against us. The Bible calls it the charge of legal indebtedness. It was a charge against us. And it was a legal charge. We were indebted. We were indebted. And because of that indebtedness, that indebtedness fought against us. It stood against us. It limited us. Somehow it imprisoned us. It imprisoned us. It imprisoned us. It condemned us. That charge of legal indebtedness. Hey, come on, Zuka. Now listen to me. It was a debt. Maybe through your own doing. Maybe it was my father or my grandfather who went to some place and therefore that charge of indebtedness was imposed upon the family. Now, if you can accept this truth, now listen to me. Have somebody here. Here. Accept the truth. Accept this truth. Accept this truth. There was a charge against you. Maybe it was your father. Or your grandfather. Or your great grandfather. Who did something. And therefore, we owe. Spiritually, we were indebted. And because of that debt. We were limited. We were limited. Now, for, for, for instance, let me let me explain it practically. Let me explain it practically. Don't know my please come. Stand here. Pastor Ennis, please come. Stand here. Pastor Ennis, Bunny. Now, you want to act practically. You want to act practically. Now, you. You owe this man. You owe him so much. So much dollars you can pay. You hold him. Okay? So you are indebted. Maybe that debt was such you by your father. Or your grandfather. Or your mother. Or your grandmother. Or your great grandmother. Who did something and brought that debt. Now, and the debt is there. Now, you hold this man. 
Now you go towards him. Go towards him. What will you do? What will it do? He will run away. Eh? Can't you run away? You will run away. Because that death is weighing on you. That death has imprisoned you. That death has limited you. The Bible says, Jesus cancelled it all. Hallelujah. Thank you, man of God. Jesus cancelled it all. He cancelled it all. Listen to me, Florence. Listen to me, Eva. Listen to me, Stella. I said, listen to me, John. I said, listen to me. Listen to me. I said, listen to me. Your daddy went to some place. Your granddaddy went to some place. Maybe your uncle went to some place. And did something. And there was a death. That death is a legal death. It was a charge against us. And it was a charge that condemned us. The charge was there. I remember some time back. I remember so I went to the mountain to pray. When I was praying, something came upon me, and I started fighting against something that was working against my family. I started fighting, and I fought and fought, and I was tired. But it says I should continue fighting. I fought until I I, I sensed the note of victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me. It doesn't matter what your daddy did. It doesn't matter what your granddaddy did. It doesn't matter where they went to. It doesn't matter what they have brought to the family. It doesn't matter what is fighting against the scripture. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, woman. Chapter number 30. Verse number 17. Now, if you are here today, I want you to know that Christ took every sickness to the cross. Whatever sickness, it may have its own name. The name may be very unhudious. Christ nailed it to the cross. It doesn't matter the sickness. Listen to me. When sickness comes, you must let the sickness know that by the stripes of Jesus you were healed. And then it nailed all to the cross. No matter the name. We want to read the scripture again. For I will restore health unto thee. Everybody say it after me. For I will restore, I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. Say thou say of the Lord. Say thou say of the Lord. Say thou say of the Lord. I will restore your health. And I will heal your wounds. Say that say of the Lord. He will restore my heart. And he will heal my wounds. Now, this is the Lord speaking. He is speaking. You want to refer him to his word. When he took all to the cross. When he took diabetes. High blood pressure. Asthma. Headache. Fever. Fever. Malaria, Malaria typhoid, typhoid, coronavirus, coronavirus all fevers. It took all to the cross. Paralysis. Numbness. It took all to the cross. High problem. Waste problem. Kidney problem. Liver problem. It took all to the cross. And said, I will restore health unto you. And I will heal your wounds. This is what you say, Lord. You want to pray. And claim this promise that you are talking to God. Say Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that He loved me. You said in your way in Jeremiah 30, verse 17, that you will restore my heart 
and you will hear my words. Let it be so according to your word. Let it be so according to your word. Hey, take it now. Open your mouth. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God.